Hello! So, like most of the world, I have been a little bit obsessed with the most recent season of Bridgerton and its costumes. So, one of my favorites from this season is actually one of Penelope's pink, like, daisy day dresses she wears to go meet Eloise. And it has been living in my brain non-stop ever since the episode. So I decided that I had to make it. So the dress is made out of this really cute pink cotton and um, pink sheer dot mix. Got both of these right here. When I first watched it, I thought it was just a clip spot cotton that they used. So it's actually two layers. So I was very happy I was able to find a nice sheer that would work. And then cotton was super easy to pick up at Joann's. And then her little jacket top, or like Spencer, is made out of this really cute, like, how you describe it? It's kind of like a houndstooth plaid. When I first watched it, I thought it was gingham. So in my head it was always, oh, Penelope's gingham daisy dress. But when I went back and I looked at the stills more seriously, I realized it was this like houndstooth plaid material. Um, I looked around for a little bit. I couldn't find anything similar right away. And honestly, if I found something that was close or the exact fabric, it was probably gonna be a lot more than I wanted to spend. So what I did instead is I got some pinking them, <laughs> since that's what I originally thought it was. And this one's just regular like quilting cotton weight, so I'll probably end up backing this so it gets a little, little bit like stiffer thickness for the actual little fencer jacket that she wears. Um, but I think this will be a very good substitute and it'll get the right kind of vibe and feeling that her um, Spencer had and then it took me forever to find little daisies that I was happy with to stick on so I got some in pink and some in white and I think they color match really well with the fabric I wish the daisies were like a hair darker maybe I'll try and experiment with a little bit of dye they're like definitely a polyester so I don't think they'll take too much dye but I don't want them that much darker so it might work but anyways First things first is to work on the dress, and then we can move on to the bolero, so Daisy shenanigans can wait. But for the dress, I'm going to keep it rather simple. Her dress has a nice scoop neck. I have a Regency block pattern that I've used before that came out of my Jean Honey set. Yes, my Jean Honey set period costumes for stage and screen book. I have used that one twice. Um, the one time I made a really high rounded neckline, the other time a lower a lower square neckline. So I think I should be able to pretty easily take my square neckline and just round it off and get Penelope's dress neckline. The sleeves, I've only ever made puff sleeves and I want to do straight sleeves since her um, Spencer has puff sleeves. I could make it sleeveless, but I'd like to be able to wear it without the Spencer as just a regular outfit. Oh hello Stella! Are you gonna help me talk? Yeah, you got a little fuzz on your nose. Anyways, I would like to be able to wear the dress without the Spencer too. So I think having just a regular short sleeve um, scoop neck dress would be really simple. Um, I originally planned on doing the same skirt pattern I use all the time, which is like a three piece skirt pattern. However, also looking at the stills of the costume, I cannot find any seams in the skirt. So I think it's just one whole piece which means I'm gonna have to really rely on the pleating in the back to give my skirt the flare. Because her skirt has a lot of flare. I assumed it would have paneling, but I cannot see any paneling. And especially where their overlayer is this really fine sheer, it should be pretty easy to see the paneling. So that's fun. I thought maybe it was hidden in the pleats, but even then, like looking at the hem, I cannot see anywhere that there would be a seam. So I guess it's one piece which on one hand makes life easier for me, on the other hand also makes me worried. Don't, don't eat my daisies. No, don't eat my daisies. She's trying to eat my daisies. But anyways, so I have all my fabrics. I have a working pattern that I'm gonna use. And what I think I'm gonna do for this is I want to try and do at least like 90% of this. Who knows, it might end up being completely, um, but hand sewn using some period accurate techniques. We'll see once I get to the Spencer what I wanna do. But for now, I think I'm going to do this mostly historical, which is funny because I thought this was going to be a really quick, really easy project. Oh, I'll do some hand sewing and I'll do some on the machine. It'll be fine. But this is me we're talking about. I like to make things harder for myself because I like to do hand sewing, apparently. 
but anyways. Part of the reason why I really liked this dress is because it was pink, because it had daisies, because I thought it was just really cute and fun and like it kind of reminded me of like coach handbags if anybody remembers those ones if they still make them that have like all the little flower cutouts all over them that's what this dress reminded me of like a walking manifestation of that kind of look and i don't know it was just it was so fun i had to make it so let's get started on the dress and that's all we'll do for this segment of the video and then later on we will work on the spencer and probably her little red reticule because she does have a cute really really cute matching reticule and I love it. So let's get started. Okie dokie, so first things first is to pull out my little bag of miscellaneous Regency patterns and try to hunt down my two bodice back patterns and the bodice front so that way we can go ahead and make copies of these and do any necessary alterations that I want to do to them. Like I talked about earlier, my pattern is for a square neckline, so we're going to go ahead and round that off using my French curve. And then as well over here, I'm going to get rid of those darts because I've decided that I want to gather them up instead of sew darts because I hate sewing darts. <laughs> While we're still in this pattern drafting zone, I'm going to go ahead and draft this short sleeve pattern out from my Jean Honeyset Perry Costumes for Stage and Screen. Um, this is just a nice little short sleeve. It ended up being a little bit of a pain in my butt, but <laughs> hey, it worked. Now we get on to the good stuff, cutting out all of my layers out of fabric. So for this project, we're gonna cut it out of this nice pink cotton, as well as this white linen cotton blend mystery fabric. It's definitely a natural fiber. I'm pretty sure it's a linen cotton blend, but honestly, I do not remember when I even bought this. So, you know, it's just a mystery. Okay, with our other two fabrics cut out, it's time to move on to the spotted tool. So I'm going to give this a rough cut around the edge because I'm going to go ahead and immediately baste these two layers together. And once I've got it all basted together, I can go ahead and give it a much more precise, like fine cut around the edges. Alrighty, so I am all done with basting my um, dotted layer and my pink cotton together for all the pieces for the uh, bodice at least and I've gone ahead and I've started prepping my seam allowances for what I'm going to do next so what I am going to do is I've pressed the side or the center back and the side back under each a half an inch and then I also did the same for the cotton lining pieces I have here because I'm going to do what's called an English stitch or a stitch without a name. I believe that's the right name. My brain's malfunctioning a little bit. Don't mind me. Um, so anyways, how we're going to do this is we're going to take the two layers and put them on top of each other like this. So wrong sides, wrong sides together. Whoop. Perfect. Wrong sides together and then we're going to take our right sides of the like fashion fabric and place those two together and pin them all the way around like this and then we're going to go in and we're going to do this stitch and right to do it it's really nifty and <laughs> why I'm going to stitch the bodice together by hand. So you're going to stitch all four layers of fabric together at once by going in through three layers catching just like the top edge of the layers so you're going to go in three skip this one and then when you go back around you're going to do these three and skip this outer layer and then just repeat that um, I'll show you how I do it but we're going to do that to secure this all the way around and then I think I'm going to do that to secure the side seams to the uh, side front as well once I'm done with doing both my back pieces. I really like this stitch. It makes it super easy to sew all four layers and it gives you a nice 
crisp, clean finish on the inside. So I highly recommend it if you're going to be doing any sort of pre-sewing machine stitching. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I go ahead and I sew up my back princess seam and my side seam using this English stitch or stitch with no name. And then when I'm done with that, it's time to move on to my shoulder seam. So I've gone ahead and I've pressed my seam allowance on the back down. And I'm gonna sew the shoulder strap down by top stitch just to the uh, pink top layer. And then I'm gonna go back and whip stitch the linen cotton lining in order to get a nice clean finished edge on the inside. Okay, so I am in my stays and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a really quick test fit, mostly just to see the sleeve because I'm a little worried about it. But I also need to figure out what, um, what width the waistband I'm gonna make is so that way I can ease the front down into it. Let's see. I'm home alone, so I'm not going to be able to fully pin myself into this, but that's fine because uh, the bodice itself should fit pretty well. It's mostly just the sleeves that I am worried about. Okay, so the top is unpinned in the back. I think that's fine. So right off the bat, this obviously will need to be gathered in more, but I'm pretty happy. I mean, I've made this bodice style before, so I knew it should fit pretty well. And then the sleeve doesn't look too bad. It's just basted it into place right now. Um, I think I need to mess with it a little bit more, but I have really good um, arm motion. So we'll just take the, the sleeve out and adjust the fit a little bit more because I'm getting these creases. I think it just needs to be rotated a little bit and then it'll be fine. But anyways, I really love this color. Like looking at it in the viewfinder, really pretty. Okay. Oh, gotta do the waist. Okay, so that should be fine. So I'm pushing it up in the back. So we've got waist, which is really just an underbust measurement, which over my stays and everything is about 34 inches. So I already ripped a strip of the pink fabric to use for the waistband, and I'm going to go ahead and set the sleeves both properly. And I'm going to ease the front of the bodice down onto the waistband. <laughs> and that's how we're going to make sure the, um, there's enough ease in the front. I already have marked. We're on my pattern where there originally was darts and then I'm gonna do the easing instead. So it should be pretty easy if I can just get these sleeves set nicely. But even worst case scenario, if I set them like this, they're not the worst. Like they've got a little bit of pulling, but they're not the worst. And then I think I'm still gonna take them up. Yeah, I think I like that length better. I think I like this length better and then I won't have to worry as much about um, them fitting underneath the puff sleeves of the Spencer. I think that's good. Okay, before I go. Oh, say hi. Say hi, baby. <laughs> she always has to be around when I'm working on everything. Alrighty, just checking in to say that I sewed my first sleeve in. Um, I don't know how I'm actually going to film the progress of sewing in the other sleeve because this sleeve was the bane of my existence, honestly. And I don't want to have to worry about like making sure I'm capturing things right when I'm trying to film <laughs> setting in the other one. But yeah, so here's the sleeve. I did try it on again and I am going to take it up a little bit again. I think I might take it up another two inches. Um, but I'm going to sew the other one in and then I'll come back and decide if I want to take it up. But I think another two inches is probably going to be pretty good. So that is where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and sew that other sleeve in and hopefully not cry too much doing it. So let's get going. Okay, so I ended up finishing up the sleeves last night after work. 
Um, I ended up taking three inches off the length of them instead of the two I thought I was going to. Um, and then I went ahead and I gave them a little hem. So I have both of those in. I tried it on. They look pretty good. So what I think I'm going to do next is I need to do the neckline binding and then I need to start attaching the waistband so I can work on the skirt. But I think I'm going to start with the <clears throat> neckline binding first, which means I need to cut out some bias tape and make some piping in order to do that. Okay, so I've got the neckline bound. Um, I still need to like whip stitch or herringbone stitch it down to the inside so it doesn't flip out. But what we're gonna do for now is we are gonna move on to doing the waist band. So I have this piece of twill tape that I've already cut out with the underbust measurement I needed plus one inch for the overlap. And I've also marked the center point on this. So what I'm going to do is line it up with the bodice. <laughs> so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do stitch it down on top of the bias like this um, because then I'm gonna take a strip of the cotton to cover the right side. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch down, well pin, and then stitch down the sides where there's gonna be no easing, it's just gonna be flat. And then I think it'll make sense to then go back and ease in the rest, since I won't be finicking with um, pins quite as much. Okay, so I will go ahead and just stitch the non-gathered parts down and then we will come back and gather this up and stitch that down as well. And then we can move on to the skirt because then we'll attach the skirt to this waistband kind of the same way we've done this. And then I will cover it with my piece of pink cotton. Alrighty, so I got the front part of the waistband all sewn with the front gathered in. And then I went ahead and I did whatever focuses. Um, the stitching around the neckline, my neckline, my brain just completely blanked out the herringbone, the herringbone stitching around the neckline. So with that done, we're going to move to the skirt. Okay, so I went ahead and I got each <laughs> layer of the skirt all seamed up. Um, so I started this project with five yards. Sorry, I'm trying to find my seam. <laughs> Okay, so I started the project with about five yards of both the pink cotton and the pink tool. So I ended up, after doing the whole bodice and everything, having three and a half yards that I put all together into the skirt. Um, so I seamed both together with just a simple running back stitch. And then I've gone ahead and I have basted them together at the top. So since my skirts are prepped, I can go ahead and attach it to the bodice. So for that, what we're going to do is I'm going to match up my center fronts and then I'm going to do a little bit of easing at the front. I don't know. I'm going to mess with it. I don't know if it's going to be more gathers or if I'm going to do a few pleats, um, but whatever I do, it's not going to be quite as full as this. I just need a tiny bit so that way the skirt doesn't like pull or catch around my hips weird. And then we're going to do flat and then in the back we're going to do a bunch of pleats. So we're going to be trying to replicate how her skirt goes. I'll find a picture and I'll put it up. Let me see if I have one on my phone really quick. Okay there we go. So we're going to try and replicate how her pleats look as much as possible. I have a feeling that I would have been better off if I had like another yard of fabric if I had started with six yards instead of five, but we're gonna make it work. Okay. 
I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time messing around with these pleats, making sure I get them exactly how I want them. And then once they're satisfactory, I go ahead and I stitch them down with a nice wide back stitch to the little piece of twill tape I had for my waistband. Before I can go ahead and finish up my waistband, I'm gonna sew these two little strips of two inch wide cotton to both sides of the back in order to finish off that raw edge. Facing secure, I can finally add this little waistband piece on top of my raw edges. And this is gonna just get secured by a nice tiny little back stitch on the top and bottom edges. Okay, so I just did my final fitting and I accidentally made it a little too small, which I think is probably just from all the bulk in the um, pleats. I probably should, I should have made it just like inch wider so I could have a good overlap and deal with the bulk of the pleats. <laughs> but anyways, it is what it is. It meets up almost perfectly at the back. Um, so I'm just going to put, instead of doing dress hooks that overlapped like I originally was going to, I'm just going to do a couple of hooks and eyes that meet just exactly. So I think I'm going to take another piece of cotton too and make a little facing that will um, flip under so that way when they pull you won't see the white of my shift and petticoat underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out all of my hooks and eyes and we're gonna do that. I don't wanna do too many. We'll see, we'll see how many I do. Hopefully I can get away with like four or five <laughs> and not have to do like 10 or something. So wish me luck. Alrighty, so I ended up managing to use five sets of hooks and eyes along that back opening, and I did cut out this little strip of cotton that I'm going to sew behind the eye portions of the hooks and eyes. Um, this is just going to get stitched down with a nice quick running back stitch, and it works exactly as I wanted it to, which is providing a little bit of a shield behind these hooks and eyes. And with the closures done, that means we are finally done with the dress, which of course means it's time to go out to my backyard and give her a twirl. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure, and be sure to stick around for part two where we get to work on the world's cutest Spencer jacket. So thank you very much, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.